Hi all, and welcome to the quick and dirty edition of the Star Citizen Pledge Guide. I'm your host Ben, also known as Ultramyth on the RSI forums. So, if you're here, you've probably heard of Star Citizen, and you might even be interested in pledging for the game, but you may be having trouble making sense of the information overload on the RSI website. Maybe you're thinking of becoming a part of the world's most successful crowdfunding campaign, but perhaps you've heard some nasty rumours like you have to pledge hundreds or even thousands of dollars to get into the game. The point of this little guide is to help you sift your way through the RSI pledge store and make a pledge that won't cost you the earth. The pledges that I'm going to review today are between $30 and $45. Both of these pledges that I'm going to recommend net you the game and Squadron 42 when they come out. The first we're going to look at is the $30 RSI Aurora MR game package. The main feature of the package is the ship, the RSI Aurora MR, which is a personal transport and all-round starter ship, which you will be able to use once the persistent universe, that is to say, Star Citizen itself, is released. In addition to your ship, your $30 will also net you a self-land hangar, which means you will be able to download the hangar module even today and be able to in-game walk around your ship to get a feel for what it will be like. You will also receive 1000 UEC starting money, which you will be able to use to purchase cargo, weapons and other items in the actual game after it launches. The package also comes with 2 months of ship insurance. This basically means that for the first 2 months of play once the Persistent Universe goes live, you will be covered in the event that your ship is damaged beyond repair and you will be provided with a replacement. After the 2 months period, you will have to pay a small premium of in-game UEC to maintain your insurance. You also get digital downloads of the game manuals, Squadron 42 and Star Citizen once they're released. Squadron 42 will most likely be available sometime during 2015, whilst Star Citizen itself will probably not release until sometime in late 2016. All in all, the $30 game package is a good solution if you're planning to pick up the game once it releases, but if you're not really that interested in following it in the meantime. If you're interested in being able to fly your ship now and test it out in Arena Commander, you can purchase a $5 add-on, which will allow you to take part in the testing phase of this particular module. However, if you're really interested in testing the game before it comes out, I highly recommend the Arena Commander Starter Package. This package contains everything that the RSI Aurora MR package contains. However, in addition, you'll gain instant access to Arena Commander, as well as beta access once the Persistent Universe beta is available. You'll also gain 3 months insurance, instead of 2. Personally, I'd recommend this package, as although it's $15 more, you can already get into the game now and start testing out some of its modules. And once the beta for the Persistent Universe is released, you'll be able to start working on building your Persistent Universe business up. You'll also get two great AAA games for less than the price of one. That's hard to beat. The only downside to this package is the fact that if you start playing Arena Commander, you may soon realise that the Aurora is considerably outgunned by the other ships available in the module. It is also not the most effective racer, However, you need to keep in mind that the Aurora is meant to be a starter ship. You may soon be tempted to upgrade your ship to a different chassis, mostly because you want to be more successful in Arena Commander. Keep in mind though, that all of these ships will be able to be earned in-game once the game goes live. It has also recently been announced that CIG has plans to implement a new system in Arena Commander whereby you can accumulate credit points which will allow you access to other ships and weapon systems without you having to purchase them as part of a pledge or on their store. So if you can hold out a little bit longer, that means you'll be able to earn your new ships through play just like in the Persistent Universe instead of having to fork over tons of cash. Of course, that is always a viable option, and remember that all the money goes into supporting the game. Well, that's it for this mini episode. I would like to, as always, thank Chris Roberts and the amazing team at CIG, as well as their partners and subsidiaries, for making this wonderful No Compromises space. I'll see you next time in the Star Citizen Pledge Guide.